Now, just like every other YouTuber and their grandmother, I also have filmed with the DJI Pocket 3. That's right, it's called the DJI, not DJI. We've got the DJI. So this is DJI. And on the DJI. <laughs> I watched so many reviews, some people were calling it the DJI. It's just easier to say, I guess. Anyway, I thought it'd be fun today to review and look over some of the footage I've captured, but also discuss that it's not the tool that you use, it's the tool behind the camera. That didn't sound right. It's the person behind the camera. And actually I watched Jason Lee's video when this camera came out. So seeing his footage actually made me wanna buy it. Good job, DJI. That was sponsored by DJI, by the way. <laughs> so this right here was the first footage I captured. Just straight out of the box video with low light isn't great. And I think that is one knock on these cameras and the action cameras is you actually have to jump on YouTube and look for the best settings to limit high ISO, to reduce the sharpening, to reduce the grain. I wish all these manufacturers of these tiny sensor cameras would do a better job with amateurs like myself where you just flick it open and it looks the very best it can. Okay, so this is what the Osmo Pocket 3 looks like. Auto everything, auto white balance, auto exposure. Got the little microphone on here. And then going outside, I decided to try flat profile. Now the flat profile is actually pretty great. You can bring it in, it has a lot of dynamic range and then you can kind of uh, put a LUT on your footage and make it look good and mess with the colors. But I buy a camera like this so I don't have to do any of that. <laughs> I just wanna record with it. And the other thing is putting a LUT on it and sort of messing with colors, it's not much better than the standard. No, I shouldn't say that. It is better than the standard, but not worth all that work. And number two, the flat profile almost by itself looks pretty good. The one negative I found is that exposure using the flat profile when you're backlit, it just makes you completely dark, which is so annoying. And this is what uh, <laughs> I could already tell is gonna be a problem. And in regular mode, the camera's smarter and exposes for your face. Now I also recorded some footage with the ZV-1 and I actually like the footage from the ZV-1 better but again, what the ZV-1 doesn't have going for it is stabilization and the lens is too tight. It's like you really have to hold it way out with a selfie stick or super noodle arms like me. And then I bought some boots. I decided to use the DJI to sort of get some B-roll of me putting the, I didn't know if, I film everything. I don't know if I was gonna make a boot video for you guys or what, but just in case, it's always good to record. But anyway, here's the footage of putting the boots on and what it looks like. And this is where convenience versus quality becomes a big issue. So that's what the DJI sort of looks like. But here's what the Nikon ZF looks like. I didn't end up keeping the boots, by the way. They didn't really fit so well. I got some other boots though. Oh, you like? It's just not a boot channel, but I did go down that rabbit hole as well. That This brings up like know the purpose of the camera. So I got some B-roll with this opening the shoes, but if I really want to make it look great, I have to use cameras that maybe will do a better job. Now, the best thing about this camera is really easy to use. So I actually just showed my son in five minutes how to use the camera and he actually captured some behind the scenes of me working at a temple and doing some photography. And for me, this is perfect for travel, for vlogging, but also just to set up somewhere and get some B-roll of yourself. You can put this on a tripod. You can just move the tripod around and have it follow you. Is the footage the best indoors in a temple? No, we had it on standard. It looks fine, but for its purpose, know its purpose. We weren't producing something that we were gonna you know, deliver to a client. All right, let's go to Las Vegas. So in Las Vegas is where I enjoyed using this camera the most. For one, when I was walking outside, I didn't even use the little DJI microphone. I bought this whole kit. At the best lunch at this place, RPM Italian. If you want great Italian food, it was absolutely divine. Mm. Now, yes, you're gonna pick up more of the ambient and the, especially when I was <laughs> at the, 
WPPI on the trade floor, you can completely hear all the noise. Uh, so we're getting our headshot done by uh, Peter Hurley's headshot crew. Free headshots. Oh, cinematic. I think the most fun I had with the camera was, you know, starting to learn how to do cinematic gimbal moves. I'm not great at it, and also, also the camera, since it's so small, you, when you're walking, you can sometimes see the little bit of jumpity jump. This shot of going through the doors at the Mirage, this was me arriving at WPPI, and it's a good POV instead of an action. An action camera can do this, but you're probably gonna get better quality with the DJI. So this is walking through. I think it's great for this. And here was me deciding I'm sick of the flat profile. I don't want to <laughs> sort of put a LUT on all of these later. One of the cool features is the little joystick. You don't actually have to move the camera all the time. You could just move the joystick to do a nice little pan. And I enjoyed that. Like if I wanted to show a little bit of a scene, I held very still and I just moved the joystick and it did a good job there. Here's an indoor shot in the Mirage Hotel going to WPPI. So this is an example of walking. And this is what outdoor looks like. Outdoor is 100%, you can tell what camera captured it. <laughs> it just looks fantastic. As long as you have enough lights, and this is at nighttime, actually it's super early in the morning, 4.40 in the morning, but the lights are so bright, this is straight out of camera, just flat out, let the camera do everything, and it looks fantabulous. So again, I'm not moving the camera, I'm just holding the joystick up and that worked fantastic. Now I've seen some photography channels actually use the Pocket 3 as a POV. It's too awkward though to hold this and to actually hold your camera and to think about framing. I didn't really enjoy it. I actually have used an action camera strapped to myself, uh, which is a lot better. You can actually concentrate on the photography. I, what I would do was kind of record as if I was framing up the shot, take a shot, and then put the camera away and actually <laughs> concentrate on the photography. And here's a very backlit scene. This is WPPI, they're shooting t-shirts at people and uh, <laughs> it's, it's struggling a little bit with the exposure. I probably should have shot flat here because this is a very, you know, contrasty scene with darky darks and lighty lights. Here I did a little uh, hyperlapse, which actually worked pretty good. I wish I would have done it longer. You could actually see the whole show in a second. Now, if things are well lit indoors, everything looks great. This uh, half cat lady alien person <laughs> had professional lights lighting her up and the colors look fantastic. But again, watching photographers work, listening to Jerry Guiones talk, you can see in this shot, there's actually another pocket that's recording him. <laughs> and if you're doing a talk, you know, you can actually have it, you know, follow you and you can record your talk you can put the little microphone on you, and then um, oh, it's just great for that. Absolutely great. And the quality, look at this indoor quality, looks very, very good. Uh, terrible lighting indoors, so white balance. I should have probably dialed in the white balance, but I just wanted to eat. <laughs> and um, I did notice a little bit of wobbling. You see that kind of in the corner there, guys? So um, it, it's kind of like here I'm panning with the joystick. So it's not super smooth. And the other time I notice when the camera isn't super smooth is with its focusing. So I wish it had a setting that would rack focus just slower and smoother. Instead, it has like jumpy jump focus, which is a little jarring sometimes. It should be a little more cinematic and smooth. And if you're a travel vlogger who's, uh, you know, going to restaurants and eating, you can totally put this on the table. You can put the microphone on, you can talk to it and it can record you. Now you can see in the restaurant scene here, the lighting is pretty terrible. I got raccoon eyes, but it's about the content. The ice cream is what it's all about. Here's me looking at an album. Again, this is from pot lights that are coming through, but I was showing the matte, the deep matte paper here. And um, yeah, the colors look great. So the white balance does a pretty decent job here. It's on auto white balance. And uh, that's kind of what it looked like. Now a little vlogging on the WPPI floor. I actually just ordered one of these. These are cheetah stands, which are great. You just pick them up to be in your Oh my God, was that JLo? <laughs> it turns out her body double was there. Okay, I realized I didn't record a wrap-up, so here's a wrap-up recorded on the G 
the G, now I don't know how to say it, the DJI Osmo Pocket 3. Now you be the judge of the footage, but I thought overall for what this camera is for, for a content creator, for vlogging, for, I love it for behind the scenes action, recording that, perfect, perfect camera. A Couple of weird things, the first one is right now, the way it frames you, you see how like, uh, I've got the face tracking there. <laughs> Uh, it puts you in the wrong place. So you actually have to, uh, this is how I would frame my shot actually, a little bit further down. So I actually recommend if you're doing this kind of YouTube thing to turn off uh, face tracking and just frame yourself and record that way. Now some things I wish were better. The first one is I wish we could tweak in camera the regular profile because I, I think it's pretty much there except I find it a little too contrasty. If we could just bump up the shadows, it would give it just a nicer look and also maybe lower the saturation. I don't want a color grade. So I like the regular profile. Number two, if you're gonna buy this camera, I recommend getting the, the DJI Care, the one that it's like 25 bucks, but if you break the camera, you can get a replacement for super cheap, I think for like another 25 bucks. I already dropped this camera once and it split apart a little bit. I snapped it back together and it's fine, but just in case, <laughs> you don't wanna spend another $600. And the last thing I'll say is I got this camera because I kind of hate action cameras for vlogging. They're great for action, but they look so terrible when I just want a convenient camera. With that said, I still prefer how an action camera is built, how small it is and how it records. So they're still great for everything, except I don't like the footage that much. So this has solved that problem in good light. The DJI is a win over the action camera, but it still won't replace like a small, very good full frame vloggy camera like this Sony a7C kind of thingy. Okay, <laughs> I'll see you guys next time. Bye. What'd, what'd you win? What'd you win? Uh, SD? Yeah! <laughs> I know you! You know me! Yes, I know you! <laughs> Can I give you a hug? Oh, sure. Oh my God!